we can implement a list in a program using either arrays or linked lists. Arrays are statically allocated lists, which means that their size is fixed at compile time. We cannot increase or decrease the size of an array at runtime. While these linked lists are dynamically allocated lists, which means that we can vary the size of a linked list at runtime. Now in arrays, if the amount of data that is to be stored at runtime is less than the size of array, then there is wastage of memory, while if the data that is to be stored at runtime is greater than the size of array, then we have an overflow condition and in that case the program does not work properly. In linked list, we don't have any such problem because the size of a linked list can vary at runtime. So we can insert new elements till memory is available. Now we learn about single linked list, which is the simplest form of a linked list. A single linked list is made up of nodes and this is the structure of a node of a linked list. It has two parts. The info part contains the actual data that is to be stored in the list and this link part is used to point to the next node of the list. That is, it contains the address of the next node of the list. Now this is how a single linked list looks like. The info part of each node contains the actual data. Here the data is only an integer value. It can be of some other type also. And the link part is pointing to the next node of the list. So the link part of this node contains the address of this node. Link part of this node contains address of this node. Link part of this node contains address of this node. Now this is the last node of the list. So it has no next node to point to. So the link part of this node is null. The address of the first node is stored in a special pointer. We have named it start. And all the elements of this list can be accessed with the help of this pointer only. Now if we compare our linked list with an array, we can see that the uh, nodes of a linked list are not stored in contiguous memory locations, while the elements of an array are stored in contiguous memory locations. This is because the whole array is allocated once at compile time, while nodes of linked list are allocated at uh, different times during runtime. Now let us see how we can implement a single linked list in our program. We will take a self-referential structure to represent the node of a single linked list. A self-referential structure is a structure where we have a pointer member that can point to the structure of the same type. So this pointer member link here is of type struct node and it can point to a structure of type struct node. And this pointer member is used to point to the next node of the list. So it will contain the address of the next node of the list. And this is the info part. Here is an example. Here the info part contains only an integer value. And this is the link part. This is another example. Here the info part contains three members. This is another example. Here the info part is a structure. In our examples, we'll take this structure where the info part contains only an integer value. Now to implement a linked list, the first thing that we'll have to do is declare a pointer start and initialize it to null. So this will indicate that the list is initially empty. Now let us have a look at the program of single linked list. This is a structure of a node of a single linked list. We have taken only an integer value in the info part. Now in main, the first thing that we have done is take a pointer start and initialize it to null. So this indicates that the list is initially empty. After this, we have created the list using this function create list. Now in this while loop, we are performing various operations on the list depending upon the choice that is entered. These operations are displaying the contents of the list, counting the number of nodes in the list, searching for an element in the list, inserting a new node in the beginning of the list, inserting a new node at the end of the list, inserting a new node after a specified node, inserting a new node before a specified node, inserting a new node at a particular position, deleting a node from the list and reversing the list. So in the next few lectures, we'll see how to write definitions of all these functions. In this video, we'll see how to traverse a linked list.
Now traversal means visiting each node exactly once. So we'll start from the first node and visit all the nodes till the last node. Now before seeing traversal, let us see how we can move a pointer forward in the list. Suppose we have a pointer P that points to this node of the list. And we write this statement P is equal to P link. Now P link points to this node. So if we assign P link to P, then P contains the address of this node. So P starts pointing to this node. So writing this statement makes P point to the next node. Now we'll see how we can traverse our link list. We have to start from the first node. So we'll take a pointer P that points to this first node. P is initialized with start because the address of this first node is stored in start. Now while visiting each node, we'll print the contents of the node. So here P is pointing to this node. So P info is 10. So first 10 will be printed. Now we write P is equal to P link. So P starts pointing to this node. And now 20 will be printed since P info is 20 now. Again we write P is equal to P link and P points to this node and 30 is printed. Now after writing P is equal to P link, this P starts pointing to this node and now 40 is printed. Now again we write P is equal to P link and P starts pointing to this node and now 50 is printed. Now when we write P is equal to P link, P becomes null. This means we have reach the end of our list. So we can stop. Now we can see that we are repeating these two statements again and again. So we can write this whole thing in a loop and the terminating condition for that loop would be when P becomes null. So this is the loop. Initially P is initialized with start and this loop continues till P is not equal to null. And in each iteration of the loop, we are printing the value of P info and we are uh, assigning P link to P. So this is how we can traverse our linked list starting from the first node till the last node. Now we can use the same loop to count the number of nodes in the list. Here we have taken a variable n, initialized it to 0 and whenever we are visiting a node, we are incrementing this variable n. So when this loop will end, the value of n will give us the number of nodes in the list. Now we'll see how we can use this loop to search for an element in the list. Suppose we have to search for an element x in the list. Now whenever we are visiting a node, we'll check the info of that node. And if the info of that node is equal to x, then this break is executed and we come out of the loop. We have taken this variable position, initialized it to 1. And we are incrementing it each time we visit a node. So when this loop terminates and x is found, the value of this variable position will give us the position of the node that contains x. Now this loop can terminate in two conditions. One, when this element x is found and break is executed. And another, when x is not present in the list and we reach the end of the list and p is null. So after this loop terminates, if p is null, this will mean that this element x is not present in the list. Otherwise, the uh, value of this variable position will give us the position of the node that contains this element x. Now let's see in our program these three functions display list, count nodes and search. We have called these functions in these options 1, 2 and 3. Let's see the definitions of these functions. This is the display list function. Now if uh, start is null, that means list is empty and in that case we'll just return. Otherwise, we'll traverse the whole list and while visiting each node, we'll display the info value of the node. This is the count nodes function. And this is the search function. Now let's run this program and see how these functions work. First, we'll call the display list function. So this is displaying the contents of our list. Second, we call the count nodes function. Third, we call the search function. So it is giving the position of the element. 
next we search for an element that is not present in the list it is not found in the list before studying insertion and deletion let's see how we can move in a linked list and find pointers to some particular nodes in this video we'll see how we can find pointer to last node to second last node to a node with particular info to predecessor of a node with particular info and to a node at a particular position so first let's find out pointer to last node this is the last node so we need a pointer to this node this is the code that will give us pointer to this last node now while displaying list and uh, counting nodes we had seen that the loop condition was p is not equal to null so there the loop stopped when p became null now here the loop will stop when p link will become null and p link will become null when p is pointing to the last node because the link part of last node is null so this loop will stop when p is pointing to the last node now let's find out pointer to the second last node this is the second last node of the list so we need a pointer to this node this is the code that will give us the pointer to second last node now here the loop condition is p link link is not equal to null so this loop will stop when this p link link becomes null and this p link link will become null when p is pointing to the second last node of the list because p link is this and p link link is this so when this loop stops p will be pointing to the second last node of the list now suppose we are given a value x and we have to find pointer to a node that contains this value x and suppose this value of x is 30 so that means we have to find pointer to this node in the list so this is the code that gives us a pointer to the node that contains value x we have already seen this code while uh, we were learning searching in a linked list and there we were interested in finding out the position of the node that contains value x here we are finding out the pointer to the node that contains value x so when this loop stops p will be pointing to the pointer that contains value x and if x is not present in the list then p will be null now we'll find pointer to predecessor of a node with particular info Suppose we are given a value x, then we have to find pointer to predecessor of a node that contains x. So if x is 30, then we need pointer to this node because this is the node that contains 30 and this is the predecessor of the node that contains 30. So this code will give us the pointer to this node. Here inside the loop, we are checking p link info instead of p info and this loop condition is p link is not equal to null so this loop will stop when p points to the last node because we don't want these loop uh, statements to work when p is pointing to the last node so let's see how this loop works now initially p is start p link is not null so we check p link info p link info is 20 and it is not equal to x so break is not executed p is moved forward now p link is not null we check p link info p link info is 30 and it is equal to x so this break is executed and this loop is terminated so we can see that when this loop terminates p points to the node that is the predecessor of the node that contains value x now let's see how we can find pointer to a node at a particular position these are the positions of nodes in this list suppose we are given a value k and we have to find pointer to a node that is at kth position so if k is 3 we have to find pointer to this node this is the code that will give us this pointer let's see how this code works now initially p is start and i is 1 now i is less than k and p is not equal to null so p is moved forward then i is incremented now again i is less than k and p is not equal to null so p is moved forward and i is incremented now i is equal to 3 so this loop terminates and we can see that when this loop is terminating p is pointing to the node at the kth position 
the slope condition p is not equal to null we have placed to terminate the loop in case when there is no kth position in the list that is the number of nodes is less than k for example if k is 10 and there are only 5 nodes in the list then this condition will terminate the loop these are the different cases of insertion in a linked list we will see all these cases one by one now whenever we have to insert a new node in the list first we will declare a pointer of type struct node then we will allocate memory for that node using malloc and assign the address of this memory to temp and after that we will initialize the info part of that node. So first let's see how we can insert a new node in the beginning of the list. First we will allocate memory for that new node. Now this node has to become the first node of the list. So start should point to this node and the link of this node should point to this node because then this will be the second node of the list. So first we will make link of this node point to this one. We will write temp link is equal to start because address of this node is stored in start. After that we will change start and make it point to this node. Start is equal to temp. So these are the two statements that have to be written to insert a new node in the beginning of the list. Now the order of these two statements is important. Let's see what happens if you change the order of these two statements. First you write start is equal to temp. So now we can see that the link to this whole list is broken. And now if you write temp link is equal to start, this will start pointing to itself. And whenever you process the list, you will be stuck in an infinite loop. So this is the correct way of inserting a new node in the beginning of the list. Now let's see how we can insert in an empty list. Now when the list is empty, start is null. We allocate a new node. Now this is the only node of the list, so it's also the last node and its link part should be null. So we write temp link is equal to null. Now instead of null we can write start because start is also null. So this becomes temp link is equal to start. Next we change start and make it point to this node. So we write start is equal to temp. Now we can see that we have written the same two statements for inserting a node in the beginning of the list. So these two cases can be handled using these same statements. When we study double linked list or circular linked list, we will see that the insertion in these two cases are different. But in single linked list, we can handle these two cases in the same way. Now we will see how we can insert a new node at the end of the list. Now for inserting a new node at the end of the list, we need a pointer to the last node. We have already seen how we can get this pointer. We allocate a new node. Now link part of this P should point to this temp. So we write P link is equal to temp. Now this temp becomes the last node of the list. So its link part should be null. So we write temp link is equal to null. So this is how we can insert a new node at the end of the list. Now let's see the functions insert in beginning and insert at end in our program. We have called these functions in cases 4 and 5. This is the function insert in beginning. Here we have allocated space for the new node and initialized its info part. After that we have written the two statements temp link is equal to start and start is equal to temp. This is the function insert at end. Here also we have first allocated space for the new node and initialized its info value. And after that we are finding pointer to the last node of the list. And then we have written p link is equal to temp and temp link is equal to null. Now with the help of these two functions, we have made a create list function which we have called in the beginning of the program to create the list. Here we have called a create list function. Let's see the definition for this one. First we are entering the number of nodes that are required in the list. If n is equal to 0, we return start. Now when we are entering the first element of the list, we are inserting into an empty list. And we have seen that insertion in an empty list and insertion in the beginning of the list can be handled in the same way. So here we are calling insert in beginning for inserting the first element of the list. And rest of the elements are inserted at the end of the list using insert at end function. Now let's run this program.
Now first we insert a new node in the beginning of the list. So this new node is inserted in the beginning of the list. Next we insert a new node at the end of the list. So this new node is inserted at the end of the list. In this video, we'll see how to insert a new node between two nodes of the list. Suppose we have to insert a new node between these two nodes. So we'll need a pointer to this node. We allocate a new node. Now for this node to come in between these two nodes, link of this node should point to this node and link of this new node should point to this node. So first we'll make link of this node point to this node. We'll write temp link is equal to p link because address of this node is in p link. After that we'll make link of this node point to this node. So we'll write p link is equal to temp. So this is how we can insert this new node between these two nodes. Now the order of these two statements is important. Let's see what happens if you change the order. Suppose first you write p link is equal to temp. And after that you write temp link is equal to p link then this happens the link to this part of the list is broken so the correct way of inserting a new node between two nodes of the list is this now we'll see how we can insert a new node after a specified node insert a new node before a specified node and insert a new node at a given position the statements of insertion in all these three cases will be the same these two statements will write the only difference will be in how we will find this pointer P. First we will see how we can insert a new node after a given node. Suppose we are given a value x and we have to insert a new node after the node that contains this value x. Now if x is 56 then in this list we have to insert a new node after this node. That means we have to insert a new node between these two nodes. So we will require a pointer to this node. We have already seen how we can find a pointer to a node that contains value x. Now after finding this pointer p, we allocate this new node and insert it here, writing these two statements of insertion. So this is how we can insert a new node after a given node. Now let's see how we can insert a new node before a given node. Suppose we are given this value x and we have to insert a new node before the node that has this value x. If x is 45, then in this list we have to insert a new node before this node. That means we have to insert a new node between these two nodes. And for that we require a pointer to this node. So if we have to insert a new node before the node that has value x, we need a pointer to the predecessor of the node that contains x. We have seen how we can find this pointer. This loop will give us a pointer to the predecessor of the node that contains x. After finding this pointer, we allocate a new node and insert it here using these two statements of insertion. So this is how we can insert a new node before a node that contains value x. Now we will see how we can insert a new node at a given position in the list. Suppose we are given this value k and we have to insert a new node at kth position in the list. If k is 4, means we have to insert a new node here in this list. The position of that node will be 4 and the position of this node will become 5, position of this node will become 6. So that means we have to insert a new node between these two nodes and for that we require a pointer to this node. So if we have to insert a new node at kth position in the list, we have to find a pointer to the k minus 1th node of the list. And we have seen how we can find this pointer. This loop will give us a pointer to the k minus 1th node of the list. After finding this pointer p, we allocate a new node and insert it, writing these two statements of insertion. So this is how we can insert a new node at a given position in the list. Now the position of this node becomes 4, of this node becomes 5 and the position of this node becomes 6. Now we will see in our program the three functions insert after, insert before and insert at position. We have called these functions insert after, insert before and insert at position in cases 6, 7 and 8. 
this is the insert after function here first we find a pointer to the node that contains x if p is null after this loop x is not present in the list otherwise we allocate a new node and after that we insert it using these two statements of insertion now let's see the insert before function in this case first we have to find a pointer to predecessor of the node that contains x so here we are doing this after that we allocate memory for the new node and insert it using these two statements of insertion now before doing this we have put two checks one when the list is empty another when x is in first node now if, list, if list is empty start will be null and in that case we'll just return because in that case we don't want to execute this code as p will be null and accessing p link will give us error so if list is empty we'll just return now if x is in first node that means new node has to be inserted before first node and the new node will become the first node so start has to be updated so this case also we have written separately now let's see this insert at position function here first we have written code for the case when k is equal to 1 because in that case start has to be updated otherwise we find a pointer to k minus 1th node of the list and then allocate a new node and insert it using these two statements of insertion now let's run this program this is our initial list So we have inserted a new element after this node 2. Now we have inserted a new element before node 5. Now this 45 is not present in the list. So this message is shown. We have inserted this new element at position 1 in the list. Now this is showing that you can insert only up to 9th position. In this video, we will see how we can delete a node from a single linked list. These are the different cases. We will see all of them one by one. Now for deleting a node from a single linked list, first we have to rearrange the links so that the node is logically removed from the list and then we will physically remove the node by calling the function free. So in all the cases, we will take a pointer temp and make it point to the node that is to be deleted. After that, we will rearrange the links and remove this node logically from the list and then we will call free with this pointer. Now let's see how we can delete the first node of the list. This node has to be deleted, so 10 points to this node. Now after deletion, start should point to this node. And the address of this node is in start link. So we'll update start and write start is equal to start link. So now this node is not a part of the list and our list is starting from here. We can physically remove this node by writing free temp. So this is how we can delete the first node of the list. Now we'll see how we can delete the only node of the list. 10 points to this node. Now for deleting this node, start should be null. So we write start is equal to null. Now instead of null, we can write start link because initially start link was null. Now we physically remove this node by writing free. So this is how we can delete the only node of the list. Now we have seen that in the case of deletion of first node also we have written the same statements. So we can use these same statements for handling these two cases. Now let's see how we can delete a node that is between the list nodes. Suppose we have to delete this node. For that we will require a pointer to the predecessor node. So first we will find a pointer 
to the predecessor of the node that is to be deleted. Now we will make temp point to this node, temp is equal to p link. Now for removing this node from the list, the link of this node should point to this node. So we will write p link is equal to temp link. After that we will physically remove this node by writing p. So this is how we can remove a node that is in between the list nodes. Now we'll see how we can delete the last node of the list. Again, we'll need a pointer to the predecessor of the last node. Temp will point to this node. Temp is equal to p link. Now to delete this node, this should become null. So we'll write p link is equal to null. Now instead of null, we can write temp link because temp link is also null. After that, we physically remove this node by writing pre. Now we can see these statements are similar to the statements that we have written for this case of deletion in between the list nodes. So these two cases can be handled in the same way. This is the function delete node. If the list is empty, we will just return. If the node to be deleted is the first node of the list, we will update start, delete the node and return. If the node to be deleted is in between the list or at the end of the list, First, we'll find the pointer to predecessor of the node that is to be deleted and then we'll delete the node. Now let's run this program. So this tree has been deleted from the list. Now we try to delete a node that is not present in the list. So this message is shown.